Hello everybody, it's Mikefoot here. In this episode I would like to show you the Twitching Dungeon and the boss battle therein. Um, so basically this dungeon is designed for level 60-70 characters, um, but I would suggest doing it at least being level 65 because well, those monsters here maybe are not too hard, but the boss room is pretty damn difficult. Um, and you really need a lot of damage and a lot of like um, HP basically so that you can actually out sustain the monsters in this room. Um, moreover, there are like few like kind of dangerous mobs in here. So the most important one uh, is Arachne Embroiderer. So these guys, um, they can basically stun you for the duration of one turn. So um, while it's not that much of a danger in the rooms which are not the boss room, in the final room here, um, they can actually like disable your characters pretty much permanently. So what you really want to do here is like get their attention somewhere else. So for instance, position yourself so that they can't reach you. Hide behind like even enemy monsters. Uh, use summons and so on, so that you just don't uh, don't get stunned because this means that your damage output goes down. And the tactic I propose here is to kill the ancestral twitch it fast so um, you don't really want to lose any damage because um, next thing I would like to mention is that the ancestral twitch it has like a lot of damage output it's like I think this is the most dangerous boss as far as those level 60-70 bosses are concerned maybe Rascal does hit a bit more no I don't think he does so ancestral twitch it has like huge damage output uh, he can easily hit like 500 per turn I think he can summon as well so um, what you really want to do here is to kill this guy fast, but he also has a regeneration spell. This means that he can basically heal um, about four, five hundred HP each turn. So in order to kill him, and you will want to kill him within the first two, three turns, you really need to get all those characters going. Um, it's a good idea to have a Sakri with you so that he can turn the Twitch in behind, like so uh, you you. You basically want to get your Sakir in front of the Twitchnit and uh, to get your team behind it. So um, Sakir can quite easily do this thing and he can also lock the boss. Um, so right, well we'll see how it goes, right? Um, why don't we then begin the fight? Because I don't really think I have anything else to say. And the Crowbox here can remove MP from your characters. Um, they can push them as well. They kind of have some damage, but that's not too relevant if compared to the amount of threat that um, the embroiderers pose. Um, yeah, I think let's let's just see how it goes. Okay, so well, as you can see, the combat has already started, and the boss can deal AOE damage here, as you can see too. So uh, you really have, and he can push you back. So the guy is pretty damn dangerous. Um, so what you really want to do is to keep your characters healed. Um, I can't suffer damage from behind, I will see how it goes. Barbaric is a pretty difficult challenge for this place too. Um, so if you're running the dungeon for the first time, I think that it's not really um, worth to bother with the challenges. You'd do much better if you just um, try to win the fight, try to like uh, recognize the mechanics and so on. And remember that every fight here is different. Um, because um, because uh, the setup of the monsters will differ depending on like it's random where each of the monsters go. So okay, I'm gonna just try to to focus on the fight. I using I'm using the shield on the ancestral twitch need so that um, I can actually. Uh, so that I can actually reduce the damage output he has. Um, I'm gonna try to buff up my characters as much as possible uh, because I just want to deal with this guy as fast as, po as I can. And basically it's worth to check the resistances too. So he has pretty high resistance to everything apart from uh, air and he has like particularly high resistance to air which is a bit unfortunate for my party because I'm running um, this um, high F damage group basically so um, I don't really want um, to, 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 to this is a bit like 
difficult for me because of that. But apart from that, yeah, I'm gonna try to just use the air spells and jump away with this guy. Ten round, I didn't manage to do this in time, I think. Yeah, I've been, I took a bit too long on thinking. Regardless, yeah, I think I'm gonna fail this challenge right now. Okay, it's, I think it's okay, that's... Oh, right, yeah. Um, she stands around sadly, but uh, there is nothing I really I can really do about this. Okay, so I'm gonna just try to switch places with the guy. It would be good if I could get something behind me, but since there is nothing I can do as a sacri here, um, I'm gonna try to just DPS. I mean DPT. I guess would be the more proper way to call this. Uh, regardless, yeah, I'm just gonna try to kill the boss as soon as possible. You, you can see that he's actually tanned uh, to the back. I managed to tan him around. So this means that I can probably um, probably deal the damage to the back. I had to leap with the calf flip so I won't like unleash my full damage potential on him and since the calf flip is F anyway, I don't think it would really really matter that much. Um, I can't kill him this turn. This one is I'm I'm pretty sure about this one. So um, I'm gonna just try to deal as much damage as I can. Um, perhaps I'll try to drop the ancestral drella here. Um, try to um, get it behind um, the sacria, so that um, is, it would be good because then he can't push me back. I think he can make it. He has enough MP. I'll just walk back here, turn round, and no, I can't. Shit. So this is a bit unfortunate to think about. Yeah, one movement point short. What well, happens, right? And now Sakura can actually get stunned by the embroiderers too, which is really bad. I mean, not. Uh, yeah, this is. The, I messed up. I was thinking that I could get the driller behind. I couldn't apparently. And now, like, my Sakura is in trouble, and the Ancestral Trishin will actually, like, unleash its full damage potential on my group. Okay, but as you can see, this I actually used the fake as shield on it, so the amount of damage it dealt is not that significant. I did fail the challenge, however, so I tried to do another one. Um, with this many monsters, I don't think it's, like this easy to do the challenge I'll try to get the IO back into action no I can't this is bad this is really bad so I actually lost my main damage dealer here um yeah yeah I can't really do anything with the end rips either okay so as you can see this fight can go wrong as I said the embroiderers can really like change Turn the tides of the fight. Um, I don't think I will fail it, but um, this guy is pretty tough anyway. Oh, they got the sacri, not the eye of I. Like, yeah, this is, it's good that they got, yeah, they got the the sacri, not the eye of. But on the other hand, I really don't have enough damage right now to kill the the boss. This might be a little bit of an issue. Okay. I'm gonna use everything I have on this guy because I can. So Sacre will miss its turn. I will have to try to just deal with the boss with what I have. Okay, so this is just going from bad to worse. I think it's much more beneficial for me to just go behind the boss now and hit it with the cards from behind. So I'll try to gamble here. If I can deal the double damage, then no. yeah, I can't. Uh, if I could deal the double damage here, this would have been a kill for the neutral. Since I didn't, it just doesn't really matter because, like, the boss is tent uh, towards me regardless. So I don't have enough damage to kill it this time.
it dropped the pouch, the pouch yeah it did so I can like deal a bit more damage here too uh, so actually this was a mistake if I didn't heal it I would have killed it oh yeah but I would have also failed the challenge so mistakes happen okay just misclicked ancestral ring this is like okay 1000 commas I think not that bad okay so the sacria it does say it lasts for two turns but it just lasts for one so on the next turn the sacria can actually act okay let's see if this guy actually heals himself on the second like two times in a row no so I think it has a cooldown on healing then this must be it um, so right now I think that like it's weird that he actually tried to focus the Sakri who is the most HP if he recognized it as a threat yeah I did I mean okay so um, here I'm gonna just try to kill the boss right now I think on the Catholic stand it's it's basically one fight because of that and I try to just finish the monsters off in melee because I want to get this 75% bonus like this one is a bit difficult in this dungeon I would really need to focus like kill the Twitch need very soon um, if I wanted to do it I hope I don't kill it right now no I don't okay so basically I can try to start hitting monsters uh, with Faker okay um and my eye of doesn't really need to to hit the boss anymore I mean yeah because I want to finish it off with the cat but I actually now that I think about it it would actually give the e cat flip a free turn to roam so why don't I just kill the boss right now okay. so the boss is down and basically the all the complexity of the fight is gone with it so now we just want to clear this room entirely and this shouldn't be too much of an issue at all so as you can see the Sakura is back into action he did actually take a lot of punishment from the monsters I think the embroiderers actually have a 10 cooldown on their skill too so if they use it once they can't reuse it on the next turn yeah, I think I'm pretty comfortable with Sacrifice just sitting here and chilling with those three happy guys because well he still has like really a lot of HP the Catholic is getting really unlucky with the card draws like yeah really really damn unlucky but yeah, I can't really help it anyhow so what I'll try to do here is just hit from behind okay critical failures um, minus AP draws and so on. It just happens sometimes, and you just have to live with this on a flip because you don't really have any other choice, right? Um, okay. So I try to deal the damage here. Um, right. I don't really think I have anything better to do with the Inutroph. Just sit here, chill, and just try to deal as much damage as I can. Okay, so as you can see, the rest of the fight is pretty simple. Like, all you really need to do here is, um, is just clean this room up without failing the challenges. And depending on what challenges you do, this will be either pretty easy or pretty difficult. Okay, so I might actually try to push this guy away and try to start healing the Sakria. It would be a shame if I actually lost the character in fight. I can resurrect, but still it's like... Yeah, dying to trash is not a good feeling at all. Okay, so I, I think I'll just start hitting the Trichnit here. I'm trying to level the skills, so I think the fake I will just do those less powerful attacks for the time being, because I just I just want to level the steam glyph for more utility. Okay, so now I can finish off this guy quite easily, one hit. 
And this guy will also go down. So while well, IOPS are pretty pretty solid as far as this direct damage is concerned. Um, I think that despite the fact that my car flip has like more expensive gear right now, um, the IOPS still does hit for a bit more. Okay, so as well, I've actually got my Sacre to quite a decent amount of um, of anger. So this is 61% bonus damage, which I which I'm getting right now, which is like yeah, nothing to complain about anyway. I think I'll have to go to, me to melee with this guy because I'm afraid I can hit for just too much. And I don't want to, to kill this monster and fail the challenge accidentally. I did this a couple of times. And like the drop from this dungeon is like pretty, pretty, uh, like pretty damn expensive. So I don't want to miss on anything connected to it. Mm, I did drop two ancestral capes on my first run, it was yesterday and I did sell one of them for like 25,000 camas so that's pretty decent I think and yeah like this dungeon does drop some imperial un ancestral trees in parts as well so generally speaking um, you can get some pretty nice items uh, for the tanky characters who are going for the FS so for my Sacre it's pretty much perfect like if I can, if I can get um, this FR gear I'm actually set I mean I do have it right now but it's it's really good it's like a lot of percentage bonus to both elements mm. I'll go for this one because I think the calf, at least the sacre can get to the to the other one anyway. This one is still alive. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. Not anymore. I should have transpositioned, I think. I have an idea though. I'll just switch with the calf flip and the calf flip will just approach and kill. So not not a big deal here at all. Oh, she won't kill. God, this is disturbing. I, yeah, I expected to deal enough damage. Okay. Fair enough, I guess. Try to dodge, try to pick out the pouch. Maybe make space for some other characters to like engage on this guy. The Enrips, I can just dodge this one. I think I can kill the monster. Yeah. And down he goes. So this leaves us with one monster on the board right now, and we're done with the fight. Oh, I can't, I can't close the gap. God. Right, so I think I'll just make space for the sacred then. Oh, I moved a bit, like, way too far. I'm not sure about this, like, if I kill it with Sacre's fist. Because it does drag me across the battlefield and then it... Mm. Never mind, just uh, the fight is over anyway. So I'm not sure if the Sacred Fist spell deals damage first or it uh, actually uh, deals damage after you engage an opponent. So, as you can see, another Ancestral Trishnit Cape and Boots, which are not that great at all, but the Cape is really a uh, valuable item. So, this was definitely a really good run. Um, and yeah, so this is it for this dungeon. As you can see, you can get some decent items, some decent, make some decent money from it. And the experience is like, I know, acceptable, I would say. So you can farm it, you can level here, you can like make some cash, you can gear up and like uh, try to do some other dungeons later. Um, so in the next episode, because this is it for this one, 
I would like to show you the um, the Buerke dungeon. I mean the Buerke dungeon. Um, I think it's tried this trenchment or something like this. Mm, so it's a bit more difficult than this one, I think. I thought that like Trishnit was the most difficult dungeon for this um, level 60, 70 uh, characters, but I did run the Buerke. It's pretty difficult for my setup because like many monsters there have like huge resistances to F. Basically everything there has huge resistance to F, so uh, my Ika flip isn't too useful there. Um, the IOPS uh, damage potential is a bit lower too. Um, so yeah, it's not a really easy run for me. But I did manage it uh, like I think like three days ago. And I didn't have uh, like good gear back then, so I think I can try it again and I will show you how to do it. So I hope you enjoyed it, um, and well, stay tuned for more episodes. See you guys.